Jenner Moore Griffin here and tonight on Vape TV Live we're doing the Battle of the Bottom Feeders part one. Part two will be next week and you know I've told my story of attempting to quit e-cigarettes before and I hated messing with cartridges. I hate dripping. It's messy. It's a pain. What really really got me off of analog cigarettes were the first two bottom feeders that I got. One which was a uh, Rio and the other which was an Ali E. I've since added other Ali's and Fidiuses and Revolutions and extra Rios and Rio Minis and Woodvilles and Monkey Boxes. So we're going to kind of take a look at each one, um, what some of the pluses and minuses of them all are, and then you know maybe you can use that information to decide which one might work right for you. So the first up is the Rio. Now there are several different models of Rio from uh, Red Eye Dancer on the ECF forums. Um, goes by riosmods.com and that's down on the bottom screen there. There is the Rio Mini, which is a 3 mil bottle, 14500 battery, very nice tiny little form factor. Works great. Um, the Rio Grands are the exact same design, only cut out of a larger block of aluminum. 18650 battery or two 123As for 6 volts. A 6 mil bottle and a slightly larger door. The last model is the Rio Woodville, which is a solid block of wood. This one happens to be Purple Heart and Zebra. Um, holds a little differently, button on the side. Um, love them. Let's go take a look at each of the different models in detail. I'll look at how to fill them and we'll have a short little grift tip. So let's start with the Rio Mini. This is the purple body and the silver door. It is all one solid block of anodized aluminum. One screw on the bottom of each unit and a sliding door which fits very nicely. It has one small earth magnet on the top that pretty much holds it in place. The body is cut from one block of aircraft aluminum. It has a little spring, that's the screw on the bottom to hold that in, and then a aluminum spacer kind of in the middle to keep the battery and the bottle separate, and then one Delrin block um, screwed into the top that provides the mechanical switch, which if you turn it to the right is locked and cannot fire. And that is completely mechanical. It's actually pushing down and touching the battery to establish the connection. So no possible electronic failures there. And there's a tube that goes all the way into the body of uh, the body of the bottle, and then comes up through the top into the small catch well here. Now this one does not use a needle. You just squeeze the bottle, and as you can see, the juice comes up there. And then the, in the act of inhaling pulls it in through the air holes of the atomizer and fills the atomizer and you can vape it. This is the Rio Grand purple model with black door and as you can see I tipped this over a little bit so we have a little mess coming out of the well. That's the only downside to those. It has the same locking mechanisms. It is exactly the same body as the Rio Mini. Um, it's just a little larger for an 18650 instead of a 14500 battery. This is my other Rio Grand, a red model with a silver door. Ooh, cat here. Take the atomizer out and you can see the drip well and the hole down through the bottle. Push the bottle and some liquid will come up through the bottom there. And you can see it fills the well. Goes up to the bottom of the atomizer and comes in through the air holes. The only problem is, is that well is not terribly deep. So if you squeeze a lot of juice into the atomizer and then turn it sideways, it, it can drip out, overfill that well. The door on these has two magnets and then the exact same body configuration. One screw holding in the spring. Uh, this takes a six mil bottle, a piece of aluminum in the middle, and the same exact type of Delrin cap on the top for the mechanical switch. Oops, let's put the door in the right way, Jen. Win! 
and you can either hold it. I tend to hold it, not with my, fire it with my thumb, but hold it in my hand and fire it with my index finger like that. And that works pretty well. And the mini fits even better. It hides really well inside your hand and you can push that button. This is the Rio Woodville, which is the wooden model. It has a much deeper and more vertical line uh, catch cup, which tends not to leak quite as badly. It is one solid piece of wood except for the door. It has a nice on-off switch on the bottom. The door is a very nice, tight, smooth fit, held in by one magnet, but it really doesn't need it. It's such a nice fit. Uh, it's purple heart and zebra wood for the door. Holds an 18650 battery. Again, one block with just an opening out. It's got the screw. This one does have an electrical switch, um, and you can see some of the wiring there, and a little larger tube going over and covering that, protecting it from juice. Standard project switch. What I really like about this, it is so comfortable in your hand to hold it, it's rounded edges, and to just hit that button on the side with your index finger is very comfortable. Um, this is, I think, my favorite of the Rio mods. And again, there's the drip cup, squeeze the bottle, juice comes up. There you go. And I think, again, the wood villain is one of my favorite ones. Now, for filling these lovely babies, not too hard. These are the easiest of the feeders to fill. I grab it with my finger, I pull it out, I hold the cap, I take the bottle out. Now, it's usually not this bad, but I had a little accident here and I tr tipped the bottle over. I put the bottle down, I wrap the, the, the tube that comes out in a tissue and then kind of lay it back in the mod so that anything that might come off it goes in there. Um, and I kind of didn't fill this kind of messily bad juice, but anyway, you just drip into the bottle. One of those really hard bottles to squeeze. And I think I missed a couple places. There you go, the mod's not messy, I am. <laughs> so, you're done. You just take the bottle. I kind of, you know, wipe it off because I tend to miss. And you can see where I spilled the bottle there. That was me. And then you just screw it in and I didn't do that very well either <laughs> again me not the mod and it, it's okay to have that little crank there in the light this is my special tip is if you put a little bit of scotch tape on the bottom there it doesn't rattle if you have one that happens to rattle so those are the details on the different models of Rio um, I love them I almost always have one with me um, I prefer the Woodville a little bit just because it fits so nice in the hand to fire with that index finger and that deep and vertical walled drip well. You know, if you just drop it or tip it sideways quickly, it doesn't really make much of a mess. While I love the Grands, um, you know, if you push up a lot of liquid into the atomizer and then suck it up in, if you kind of aren't thinking and you stop vaping it and put it down, that juice will go back out of the atomizer and into that well. It's not a very big well, so it can overflow the well just standing upright if you've let too much in. Or if you tip it or let it go down at all, um, you're going to have a little bit of a mess. For some reason, this one messes more than this one does, both with identical 306 atomizers and drip tips on them. I have no idea why, but um, I mean, uh, just as a tip, I have a bag, a Timbuktu uh, messenger bag that has little pockets in it, and I usually stick them in a pocket when I'm going out so they stay vertical. Another trick is to, you know, n not push it before you're not going to use it for a while. If you know that you're going to set it down, put it in a bag, put it in your pocket, make sure that you've vaped most of the liquid out that you've squeezed up so that there isn't any to flow back out and fill out that catch cup. Um, but, I mean, these are really what got me off analog cigarettes, and I constantly have one nearby and filled. So the next feeder that I got, and I got both of these used off the ECF because these are very hard to get a hold of, is the Ali'i, or Ali'i, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Um, from rnrmanufacturing.com. He only sells about 15 a month, so you know you kind of got to watch that site like a hawk, and whenever they're in stock, uh, put one down. I do have an order in for a variable voltage model, but I don't think that's going to be here for quite a few weeks. Let so let's take a close-up look at the Elite. -E. 
And on to the Elite. These are wooden mods. They are perhaps my favorite to hold. They are needle fed, meaning if you squeeze the bottle through the opening, it pops up out the needle. They have very shallow, not very large trip cups. Um, but because it has a needle, it's feeding a little, you know, straight up into the atomizer and you don't need such a well to suck. Um, that's what she said. You pull off the side, it's got two magnets holding in the battery that it does really well. Um, a little platform on the bottom with spring. And then the connection on the top. And there is an on and off switch there. And there's a cutout in the battery door that lets you hit that switch with the cover on. The other side, the door comes off and there's the bottle assembly. This is probably the second easiest of the feeders to fill. You simply grab the bottle and pull it and its tube out. Then you take the little cap off, fill it up, put it back in, stick the tube into an obvious hole there, and shove it right back up. Now this other section where the button is is completely sealed and you can't access that. It is electrical. Um, the other problem with this is that, as you can see, these are separate pieces of wood here. And I have had this top come loose, and I've had to super glue it, which is why it doesn't look quite so polished on the top there. And the same thing on the bottom. Newer models, I've been told, do come with those pieces, that T on the top of the bottom as a solid piece of wood. Um, but just to hold this and it's rounded and to hit that button, it is the most comfortable of the feeder mods to hold. And it does really work really well. This is my other model, which is not glossy. Um, I got both of these secondhand on the ECF. Um, I have a new one on the way, so we'll see what that comes in. Um, I have to send the uh, lighter one back because the switch broke, and of course I can't access it. But it is a slightly newer model, so it's a little more refined, a little thinner, um, a little better work on the wood and the joins on that T connection. But that is the Elite E and the feeder assembly and the drip cup. It is a beautiful mod and very nice to hold. Um, I just, I have some issues with the wood coming apart and have had problems with it, but that just may be my experience. Other people have the same and other people don't have any problems at all. So those are the close-up details of the Elite from r and Manufacturing. I so want to love them. They are, they vape very well. Um, they're wonderful to hold in your hand, very comfortable firing. What I really like about them, I mean, I mean, I love my Rio Woodville and they're good to hold too. They're a little sturdier. I like the solid one piece construction of the Rios. It's really the split up construction of this that causes me problems and having to glue them back together or non-mechanical parts that I can't get to needing to be repaired. Um, but the fact that the squeeze button and the bottle are on the same side so that I can hold it in my hand like this, I can use one finger to squeeze the bottle and the other finger to fire it. Very comfortable. Um, but again, I have to send this one back because the switch is broken, it just won't fire anymore, and it is pretty and soft and smooth, and I want it to work. Um, this one is comfortable, it works. I just, every once in a while, have to go back in and, you know, get super glue up underneath in there which, you know, starts to make it look not so nice. And I like nice looking wood. Um, the, the drip cup, again, is not very deep or wide. They don't seem to make as much of a mess as the Rios do, the metal Rios, but there's not a lot there, so the same tip applies. If you're gonna put it in a pocket or set it down for a little while, make sure that you've pretty much exhausted all of the juice that you've gotten up into that atomizer. So that is the end of part one of Battle of the Feeders. Um, next week we have the uh, Phidias Edemus, and I've actually bitten the bullet and we'll take a look at the Revolution RV 2.1. This is supposed to have a 1400 mAh battery in it after people got a little upset at them for only having a wimpy battery in there. See, I'm grimming and dominoing things again. Um, and we'll take a look at my monkey box variable bolt and I'm hoping to also sneak uh, these regular monkey box in there too. So. Next week, Battle of the Bottom Feeders Part 2. Don't miss out. Mm -hmm.